First of all, everyone, once again, welcome to The Art of Podcasting. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Dale Novella, and I'm a teaching artist with Building Beats. I'm also a singer-songwriter, music producer, um, wellness instructor, <laughs> podcast host. I do a bunch of things because I'm from New York, <laughs> because I live in New York. Building Beats, if you're not familiar, is an organization that hosts podcasting, DJing, music, production, programming all over New York City and Los Angeles. The Art of Podcasting is a collaboration with New York Music Month, Extended Play, an initiative of the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, where some of y'all found it. Um, and through New York Music Month Extended Play Initiative, we will be offering free music production and podcasting workshops through May of this year. Be sure to check out the amazing lineup of workshops on our website, and I will drop those links in the chat box. If you, I'll go ahead and say it, buildingbeats or buildingbeats.org backslash explore the beat um, and buildingbeats.org, the art of podcasting. So I'll put those in the chat in just a moment. A little bit about our workshop today and our host. Today's workshop is Reaching Your Audience. During this workshop, you'll learn about making your podcast unique, podcast structure, and naming your podcast. Also metadata and why your art is the best marketing tool, as well as how to use social media to promote your podcast. Your teaching artist today will be Eric Silver, who is a writer, producer, game designer, and teacher based in Brooklyn, New York. He is the head of Creative at Multitude, an independent podcast collective, consultancy, and production studio based in New York City. He is also the dungeon master and co-host of Join the Party, a collaborative storytelling and role-playing podcast based on the rules of Dungeons and Dragons and the creator of Next Stop, a modern audio sitcom. If you have any questions or if you experience any technical issues, feel free to send me a private chat or just put it in the chat in general. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy the workshop. Once again, thank you for coming. And Eric, take it away. Absolutely, hello everybody. See, I also multi-hyphenate because I live in New York. Uh, I'm coming to you from Greenpoint, Brooklyn, which is where Multitude Studios are. Here's a Multitude Studio. This is a studio we built ourselves. This is kind of like the one that we use for the office. And uh, listen, you, you can do it too. A studio is just kind of a box. <laughs> It has uh, enough space for everyone to talk to get for everyone to talk together and then has soundproofing everywhere. It's always possible you do it yourselves. Um, the first thing I would like to say is to introduce uh, Multitude. Multitude, we are a uh, collective and studio. So we make shows for ourselves. We have um, I think eight, eight shows that we make as part of the collective, which is kind of like a network, but with no top down power. We work together, uh, sell ads, promote ourselves uh, for shows and conferences when that happened. It used to and we all have a slack and we all work together and we also make uh, make shows for other people, um, whether we made a show for Sony Music called My 90s Playlist, which you might have listened to. We're currently making a show with Nicole Perkins, formerly of uh oh no look at how big i am fortune formerly of the uh thirst aid kit we now have a show called this is good for you where she brought that idea and we make it together so there's a lot of stuff that multitude does and like i'm a full-time podcaster and i made it myself i've never worked in public radio before i never worked for npr and uh, i'm really proud of that because i'm podcast native podcast I've only listened to and care about podcasting. I've never worked in actual radio. So it's like I am prepared for this 20th century idea instead of just like recreating what you hear on This American Life and then thinking that's the end all be all. There are things that we can do as independent podcasters to promote ourselves and to uh, make sure that we're doing the best that we can. And the hardest thing about being an independent podcaster is promoting yourself and getting people to listen to your gosh darn podcast. So we're going to talk about that today. Boom. Here is my slideshow. Branding and marketing your podcast or how the heck did I get you to listen is the thing we're going to talk about today. The main thing that I want to say right from the jump is that this is difficult. It, it, podcasting inherently, out of all the things that we do on the internet, whether it's like like a Facebook post, listen, watch a uh, YouTube video, um, 
I don't know, watch a stream on Twitch, all that stuff. The podcast is the hardest thing to get someone to commit to, but when they are committed, they are the most involved. Because like, think about it. You build this relationship with the host. The show then becomes like a, a weekly or bi-weekly ritual, or you uh, marathon all of them at the same time, and then you become the, this other relationship. And then you're like, oh, this person is my friend because they are listening in your head. And so podcast listeners are the most devoted. However, the literal, like, think about the literal like ui the literal actions you need to do to get to people someone to listen to a podcast is that like someone recommends it or they find it somewhere with like some discover page um maybe it will get surfaced or someone tells them other people about it then they look at it they look at the, your title they look at your at your the art of it and they have to hit subscribe and then you have to hit the play button on the play on the podcast itself maybe you download it as well maybe not just being in wi-fi will keep someone to listening from your podcast and you have to overcome all of that and make sure to grab them that they will actually want to listen to your podcast it's, it is difficult but it is well worth it podcast listeners and i can say this both because of the the marketing numbers and the business numbers we have and also anecdotally market podcast listeners are the most devoted and we love them deeply deeply and they're the best so i'm going to try to give you as much information to make your podcast as good as possible from the jump um, all right, how do I get to you listen? The first thing, I'm going to introduce myself. I, I, head of creative, that means that I am like responsible for all of the uh, pre-production and production that goes into multitude shows. Everything about before you listen to anything, and then the structure and the words that have to do with people coming out of people's mouths, and also that is being written. I have hosted, produced, and created quite a number of shows, those seven shows down there. Uh, in total, it is six million downloads and counting for everything that I've, I have created, and that one head, heart, gut at the bottom bottom there uh, is the backbone of our paid memberful program so people that is an exclusive podcast people pay money for it's kind of it's quite very important for our independent things so like i care about the structure of making these shows also listen to them i think they're all pretty good join the party that's the D, &D show i think you guys will like that um First thing you need to know, if you want your show to stand out, your show must be unique. I know it's a joke, and we've been joking about this for, I, hey, we've all had a good time here today. <laughs> you know, it's the joke that every single person has a podcast. That's not necessarily true. Apple Podcasts says there are 2 million podcasts out there, but when you look at it, only like 40% um, of them have more than four more than four episodes. So people make shows and then they abandon the shows, whether that was intentionally or not. But it is still a very, very crowded uh, landscape out there. 40% of 2 million, still decent amount of shows. So you need your show to stand out. It can't just be like, hey, me and my friends are just going to talk about stuff and it's going to be chill and we're going to talk about movies. Sometimes we're talking about, talk about pop culture and whatever. You need your, your show concept to stand out from the jump. First step to standing out is the first step of branding is making yourself stand out. Like I was saying, just being good is not enough. Lots of people can coast on just being good, like celebrities, because they have name power. I see that this is kind of like the Karamo effect. Karamo, you just kind of like put a microphone in front of him and he talks and people are going to listen to it because it's Karamo. No shade to Karamo. Queer Eye makes me cry all the time. But like he is able to just like have a podcast and not really care about what's in it. But however, us who people don't know our name is just Karamo, you need to make sure that your show is different than other ones. You need to find your approach. What is it about you and what is it about the show that is unique? Maybe it's your voice and perspective. Um, like most media out there, it's filled by straight, cis, Christian, white men. If you're not any one of those things, certainly helps. And uh, let's keep promoting you and getting you out there. It's very important. It, it, like, I, I don't want to just be crass about it, but like being someone who is not what people traditionally think of, of a podcaster is very helpful and pushing yourself as such. Like, you don't have to go out there and be like, hey, look at me, I'm different. It's not like that, but be, uh, you making it out there helps you stand out. Also, I would say American as well. Shout out to uh, to our Irish our Irish folks uh, who I know is out there in the chat. Being not, not being an American and making a, making a show is also important and be looking at something from a different country perspective. Um, I remember watching Snowpiercer and being like, wow, this movie is definitely not from an American perspective because it's all built about collectivism and uh, like oblique and obviously fighting uh, the guys at the front of the train because it was made by 
uh, create by a Korean filmmaker. So just coming from it, you whatever it is about you that is different is very important. Maybe it's your access to certain people. You live near people. You know a famous person. Uh, you live so you live somewhere else. Uh, maybe it's somewhere where you live. Again, uh, podcasting is also revolves around c- cities and urban centers. Um, so if you don't live in New York, and I would also say the biggest urban center. So if you don't live in New York and L.A., make a pot like uh, push on that why is something that you're doing different than what's out there um your structure your tone or your subject matter are you talking about something that no one else is talking about are you drilling down on one very specific niche subject matter that you know quite a lot about is your structure and tone the way you're coming out about this differently is going to make you unique remember the pot the true crime podcast of people being kind of funny about it and drinking wine at the same time that was like Uh, That's different. Remember, the true crime used to just be like date lied. Look at this person. They're dead. We're going to tell that story. But looking at that from a comedic angle, that was looking at it with a different tone. And now it's a thing, very much a thing. So now you got to look at maybe your subject matter in a little bit of a different way. And you can structure your show, which we're going to get to in a little bit. Remember, what makes you unique? What lens can you bring that doesn't already exist? Remember, your structure, when we're talking about structure, your structure is like a heist. You have to plan it. Or maybe if you were in uh, Ocean's 12, um, you're also planning the things that you are wearing and how how incredible you look in all of these particular uh, suits. Rewatch, the, in, rewatch this movie, Ocean's 8. Ocean's 8 is very much underrated, especially uh, Kate Blanchett doing exactly what she wants to do. But remember, a structure is like a heist. You need to plan it. Before you record anything, go through, write down these questions. Who is hosting the show? Is it going to be you? Is it you with a friend? Is it not even going to be you? Is it going to be a revolving cast of six? And then uh, sometimes there's always going to be two or three of you where there'll be co-hosts, guests, other people on the show. How often? How often are you going to have guests? Is it always going to have guests? You need to make sure to know this immediately. I know you might know in your head, but it helps to write it down to clarify that. How long will each episode be? Um, you don't need, obviously, you don't need to lock this in. It doesn't need to be um, like, 37 minutes every single time but give yourself a rough outline we shoot between 30 30 minutes and an hour uh shoot going around 30 minutes and around an hour because that was kind of um cued to the old commute remember commuting (laughs) remember when we used to commute um but still 30 minutes or an hour is like i'm gonna put it's still kind of correlated to what we understand from tv um so shoot for maybe 45 minutes, maybe for an hour. If you're doing like a fiction show or something that's particular nerdy, the people will just eat that stuff up and then we'll just get as many. You can do that for as long as possible. Make sure that you know it because when you edit, you're going to go. You can go longer and then edit down uh, our basketball podcast horse that I created and used to be the host of. We used to record for like 90 minutes and cut it down to like 50 or 60 because like some we make a lot of bad basketball jokes and we had to cut them down. Obviously, I don't – that's like next level is trying to uh, edit yourself while you're speaking, but um, that is kind of something – remember, you're shooting for something in particular. How do you open each episode? That's very important how you open it. You should be opening it kind of like the same way every single episode because no matter – you have to also remember because of how people hop on to podcasts, they don't necessarily start at the first one. They might start at the newest one, and every single episode might be someone's first episode. So st- having the same intro every single time, or at least the same structure, is uh, is really important. And then where do you do housekeeping? Um, something that we're going to talk about in social media at the end of the – that's kind of the last thing we talk about – is that although you might be building your social media, the, p- the place where you can talk to all of your listeners is on the podcast. So making like a housekeeping section where it's like, oh, here's what's going on. We're going to do the look out for this thing. Doing calls to action, being like, hey, we're doing a live show by tickets. That is where you're going to say that during the episode. So having a housekeeping section, whether in the middle, whether in the beginning, um, is really important in sticking to that. Here is an example from Horse. That So it's a basketball podcast that was about kind of the drama of the NBA. Here is how we started every single one. Sup, nerds, it's basketball. Welcome to Horse, a basketball podcast about everything except the wins and losses. My name is Mike Schubert, and I'm trusted by my tr- and I'm joined by my trusted ho- co-host, the actually being over 500 to the Knicks in 2021, Eric Silver. Eric Silver, how's it going? And that joke would always be there every single time. That is how we would start it, and then that would be our intro that would get us into 
the podcast. We were then immediately going to housekeeping. So remember, we're writing the, these segments we're writing down and we're structuring out exactly how it's going to go. We're going right into housekeeping. So this is where we would talk about things for people to know. We would shout out our patrons. Everyone, if you haven't checked out Patreon, it's a really great place for in, for independent artists to get funding and for people to directly fund you. Um, and we would read ads there as well. Full Court Press would be about 14 minutes. That's where we were talking about news, something happening, because get it press like the news. Um, and we would make that joke every single time. Um, uh, and that's where we talk about the news. We would have a That Actually Happened segment where we would drill down in one particular uh, story in basketball history. And then three on three where we would do a kind of like list of three best, three worst something. And that structure would be the same every single episode and credits and outro every time we ended. As we do every single episode, we put our hands in the middle and say blank on three, something a joke referring to something we'd done in the episode. And that's how we ended it. One, two, three, blank. So you see, we wrote out the structure. This is a very, very loose thing, but you see the thing that we actually wrote out was exactly what we were going to say and having a rough estimate of how long the structure is going to be. Writing it out is very important, so you are prepared going in there. The secret thing that people don't really talk about, and because it's a little, like, heady when you think about it, but we're in a podcast panel, so I'm going to get heady about it. The podcast needs to stand alone outside of the hosts. Like the wonderful thing about podcasts that people connect with the hosts, but there's like the host exists here and is in the relationship with the show. And it can't just be like, let's just talk. Just talking has no structure, which means the hosts need to generate that from their own like charisma every single time. And that should not be how you do podcasts. You can't just like riff for 60 minutes. You're going to burn out real quick. So the show itself needs to stand as an existence and also that's going to help as you're building the brand of the actual show the show is regimented has timers has points has interviews and that's going to help you when with your brand and your voice of the show which you might translate into social media but also gives you a better idea of what the show is actually supposed to be like um so write out exactly how this is going to go it can't just rely on the charisma of you again the celebrity issue here professional actors maybe they can riff and for 60 minutes and people will listen to that. But as regular people, we need to have a structure and the show needs to stand on its own. All right. There's something else that makes it help. Like I was talking about reoccurring segments, like having you saw in the previous thing, we always have a full court press, always have a three on three, always have a that actually happened. Having reoccurring segments is really helpful, especially in an audio medium. Signposting is something when literally imagine, you know, a sign is like, go turn here if you want to go here, turn here if you want to go here. You also mean that in a fictional context, just showing showing people this is what's happening. We're leading you down the path. In audio, it's really important. People are usually not auditory learners. That's not what we're like in the 21st century. We need to see something in front of us. So you need a lot of signposting to help people auditorily understand what's going to happen next. The segment or the rigid structure of the show will give you your bones, also will help you if you go on a tangent for five minutes about about anything. You know, podcasting is all about tangents. So you do need something that pulls you back to the actual core of the show. Um, think about doing your episode structures on a, on a macro level. You're going to have, well, here's the here's the structure we're going to have. One, one out of every three episodes are going to have a guest, and that's going to be an interview. One out of every three episodes is going to be a fantasy draft where we fantasy draft the best blank. And then uh, one of three episodes is going to be more, tradi quote, unquote, traditional, where we talk about the news of the day and kind of really dig in to those news things that have a larger, like, more heady um themes conversation so think about doing that in in large and in, in varying the structure and the type of episode you're doing and remember give them names if you give them names people will be you and your hosts and the audience will all be able to talk about them with the same language be like well we have the interviews we have the draft ones and we have the heady the uh philosophical episodes and talk about them as such maybe give them cute names like like i was saying uh full court press through on three as as the list and the um and the full and the uh that actually happened so people will all be on the same level and you'll start to create inside jokes in your own fandom which again building the brand of the show outside of you as the host uh here's another structure uh we have a, that debate show i was showing you had heart gut 
um, what it, that is our um, paywalled show for Multitude. It's very good. I'm very happy with it. We wanted to create a debate show, but give it a really sort of structure. So the way that it functions is that it all revolves around the rhetorical triangle, uh, logos, ethos, and pathos, thinking with your head, your heart, and your gut. And um, there was a scoring, so there's a scoring system that revolves around that where three of us from Multitude would do three rounds where we would say which is the best of a group of like, let's say color, we're arguing colors, red, yellow, and blue. And we would have to do these categories in order to, uh, and everyone would have to, in, on each individual episode, you would have to answer all of these questions defending your uh, your choice. So then the person would be arguing and the other two would try to poke holes in your arguments just for fun. It was uh, kind of loose and then they would get scored based on their head, their heart and their gut at the end. So every single one of us would have to do these. You have to do these questions. You have to do the headline. You have to do the trading card. The trading card was kind of a fun stand in for a lot of like stats and numbers. The three best qualities is kind of getting down to brass tacks, the meat of it. Uh, and then we get to some silly ones. Fight club. How would your subject beat other subjects in a fight? The Tinder profile. What does your dating profile look like? Uh, how does Nick Cage gets in the mix is always a great question. And then your final fun fact. So we, this structure keeps us on the track. Um, it makes the debate show a little bit different instead of just like arguing with each other about which is the best thing. Um, and then uh, it, it kind of goes on a cycle is that it was like, all right, red argues, blue argues, yellow argues. And then our fourth episode, we have a structured, formal Lincoln Douglas style debate, which is different than this. So you can see the variance in the structure, even over uh, even over this uh, quote unquote season, we would have three survey episodes where we would do this and then we'd have a more formal debate. Um, in the fourth episode. All right. What's in a name? Hey, remember this? This feels like such a long time ago uh, because time is a flat circle. But remember when uh, the Four Seasons, ho the Trump campaign felt that it, they were going to the Four Seasons and it was actually this gardening company instead of the hotel? There are multiple reasons why someone would call something the Four Seasons, right? Four Seasons, it's a gardening company, landscaping, environment, totally makes sense. You're outside. Four Seasons, also family name. Very classy. You can stay here all four seasons. Also makes it for a hotel. Why these two things would have the same name is confusing. And uh, and it was pretty funny when that happened. But uh, it, it is wild when two things have the same name. It gets confusing. So you want to make sure that your name is not like a joke. And you're really trying to get your name across. Because again, the first thing that someone is going to see when they're getting a new podcast is what is the name of this thing? And look at the art. And we'll talk about the art later, but let's talk about titling and naming a podcast. Your title needs to be easy to spell, easy to hear, and unique. These are mandatory. These three qualities are mandatory. If you can't spell it, no one's going to remember how to spell it. If you can't hear it, remember this is a podcast. People need to be able to hear it out loud. It needs to be easily pronounceable and unique. You cannot have the same name as somebody else. You also can't have it too close because that would be that would be tough. Those three things are mandatory. The other things that are maybe are a little bit more flexible, if you're really hitting out of the park, you need to tell you something about the show. Like it can't just – I would move away from having a pun. If you – like I know podcasters love puns. I know that they love uh, turning turning a phrase so that they can show how smart they are. But like having a title that doesn't tell you what it's actually about and you're more focused on being cute and telling and saying something witty is not going to be helpful. There are some some structures you can find. The question is really good. Why won't you date me? Great question. Great. Tells me exactly what we're talking about. It's a dating podcast, especially involving people who are having trouble finding people who date. And uh, now you won't you date me when Nicole Byer It's by Nicole Byer. Boom. We know ex exactly the premise you're wrong about dot dot dot. Great show tells you we're going to talk about what people have been wrong about over time. And then you can do what it says in the tin, the ringer NBA show. It's just the NBA show from the ringer. Bing, bang, boom. Uh, this will also help you write your one sentence summary, which you're going to need for all the, the episode descriptions and show descriptions, uh, which we're going to talk about later. So horse is a basketball podcast. It's also the it's a, the fun thing you do about basketball. So it can be a turn of phrase, but it also tells you exactly what you're going to get into. Horse is a basketball podcast about everything except for the wins and losses. Boom. The title should lead right into your introductory sentence. 
It also needs to be available. Remember, we just talked about you we're unique, so make sure to check it out. Use name check and N-A-M-E-C-H-K. It helps you find if people already have the social media handle you want, but also it's kind of a de facto if this one exists if this podcast exists. Because Apple Podcast isn't gonna tell you that you made the same show. They're just gonna be like, Great, thanks. Thanks for giving me your podcast. Love that. They're not going to tell you, so you need to do that yourself. Also do a Google search to make sure that the SEO is even possible. Uh, we tried to name Next Stop, used to be called the Delta Line because I had it was like a fictional subway line that they lived off of. Um, and then we realized that putting the Delta Line in was never going to overtake Delta Airlines. So we needed to change the name of that podcast. It's it's tough, but like uh, even if you put in the title that you're looking for and then podcast, you need to make sure um, it's going to stand out because no one's going to find it otherwise. It's going to you're you were already shooting yourself in the foot uh, just from the jump. This isn't going to be easy. I'm telling you, coming up with the right title is really hard. When I was coming up with Next Stop, I wrote Next Stop on a piece of paper and or on a post-it note and pinned it on my computer. And I looked at it for to two weeks before I said, Ugh, okay, I really love the Delta line, but Next Stop is going to be fine. Sometimes this is fine is just as good as, oh my God, perfect. You're just going to have to live with it. Sorry, it's not like naming a child. You can name your child whatever they want. If there's there's 10 Brandons in your class, that's fine. But like a podcast needs to be unique and you, it's a, and you might need to do it for like SEO reasons. And that's kind of a bummer, but uh, doing it, doing it for SEO reasons is still a reason and uh, might be better than trying to find the perfect podcast. Um, here's the thing that we always recommend is that um, you whatever you're doing in the podcast, in whatever artistic endeavor, you are, have to be a fan of what's out there. You need to be if you're making movies, you need to love movies. If you love if you love books, if you're writing a book, you need to have read read wildly. And in podcasting, you need to know what else is out there. What you're doing, this whole thing we're talking about, audience development, is figuring out what you do and do not want to do. So look at the things around you and figure out if you like it or don't like it and why it works or why it doesn't. Remember, just because something is popular does not mean it is correct. So quibbling with things that are successful is totally fine, and you can do something different than an element of what a very popular thing does. For example, like I said, for naming, does there need to be a pun in the name? Does it need to be a pun? How am I going to stand out? We're talking about Dungeons and Dragons games. For those of you who don't know, Dungeons and Dragons is a tabletop role playing game where you get to like pretend that you're telling you're fighting something, and so you're you stellar storytelling with friends. Uh, but there's a game and twenty sided dice that revolves around it, and it's become a burgeoning podcasting uh, genre because people realize that they can just tell these stories, these oral tradition stories, capture them on podcasts. It's become very popular. We look at you look at the things that are popular around there. Do the things that uh, do I want to do the same, same things that are out there. Critical role. That is a pun. It's a Dungeons and Dragons pun. When you get a nat a twenty, uh, that is the highest thing you can roll. It is a critical hit or a critical role that you're doing. That's the pun there. That thing is incredibly popular, and everyone knows about critical role. However, it's kind of a pun and doesn't really tell me what it's what it's doing. We can still avoid that. Dungeons and Daddies, also very popular. The pun is they're doing a Dungeons and other D word joke. Get it? D&D. &D, that's the joke. On the last one, not another D&D &D podcast. They fully leaned into the fact that D&D &D podcasts are ubiquitous. And again, it was done by very popular people, so it kind of caught on. So I'll, I don't really like the names of all of these. I really like a lot of these shows. So you can still realize the things that are out there and do something different um, and uh, learn from them. Even you can like them for their content, but think that elements of what they're doing, not great. So make sure to, for whatever you're doing, compare yourself to what's out there. All right, let's talk about metadata. I don't know if you, I don't know if you've heard of what metadata is before, but it's actually one of the most important things that you're going to do for your podcast. It's also the thing that lots of people leave last because they don't want to really want to deal with it and they think it's kind of overwhelming and fiddly, but it's actually very important to people finding your podcast. What is metadata? Talk basically, it's data about data. In podcasting, this is everything you know about a show before you listen. 
here's the whole thing about podcasting being a commitment. The metadata tells you what you're going to get into before you even start listening. Because, you know, the listening is you taking you over the edge. But there is a lot that goes on to the moment if someone is going to decide to listen to your podcast. This includes, but is not limited to, your podcast art, your show title, your podcast description, your episode description, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're going to talk about all of these and how to optimize them. We already just had to talk about show titling. Um, because if people, someone listened to your podcast and be like, maybe you have a, uh, uh, I don't know. You have a movie podcast and it's called cinema or seen it. And it's at C I N E seen it, get it. And they don't think that's a very good pun. They're not going to listen to your podcast because they don't like the name because you were being too cute. So it's very important. It's remember it's people's first impressions. They're going to take them over the edge. Why does it matter? People can find your gosh darn show. It's really hard to find podcasts. So this stuff is really, really important. Uh, these are some other things that you need to consider. Um, but basically, uh, people need to find your show. Art is metadata. Remember, arguably, it is arguably, I would say, your most important tool because it's like the visual indicator of what you're seeing. And it just conveys information. What is the title of your show? And the tone, is it going to be silly? Is it going to be dark? Is it going to be serious? Um, and also, it's used everywhere. It's on your social. It's on your website. It's on your events. You, if you print flyers, if you talk about it, it's, it's on everyone's phones. Everyone's going to see. Your art is very important. I would say you should spend money on your show. Get an actual graphic designer to do this. I've messed around in Canva before. I've messed around in you in, in paint. I've like taken a photo and put an art on it. It's just you need someone who knows what they're doing. And I know it costs money, but I think it might be an actually worthwhile expenditure for you because everyone's going to see it. You can also trade. I know as artists, we love existing in, in an anti-capitalist economy where we barter and we and we trade. But I think this would be a perfect time for you to trade, like give something of yours to somebody else and to that graphic designer. Maybe uh, your accounting skills or your pottery skills or your bread baking skills. Trade something, but make sure that you get a real actual um, a real actual good art. Um, remember, this needs to look really good, really, really small and really, really big. Uh, so and only a graphic designer is going to be able to do that for you. Um, and then you're going to have a conversation in, with a mood board talking about, about what you're looking for. And they are going to be able to take your words and generate it into art. There are lots of people out there who can't do that. I, I love the select group of people who know uh, the words that correspond to art and then make it happen for you. I'm going to say if you're going to do something, if you're doing this by yourself, don't do audio imagery. Everyone does audio imagery. If you put a microphone on your podcast, I'm not going to listen to it. If you put a headphones on your podcast, I'm not going to listen to it. If you put that a waveform of, 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 you know, like the, the up and down audio thing, visualization of audio, I'm not going to listen to your podcast if it has all that stuff. Because, like, you don't have to tell someone it's a podcast. All that imagery is telling you is like, hey, I bought a microphone. I know what microphones are. That is all that's saying. I already know it's a podcast. I already know it's an audio thing. You don't need to tell me it is a podcast. Remember, you have precious time to convey what you are doing in your art. So, like, also, make sure your title is leg legible. Make sure the title is big and bright because that is what you're conveying to them. It is the art, but they need to be able to see your title on the art itself. You're going to, okay, we're going to write out our metadata. Metadata involves a lot of writing. I know you didn't know that because you thought podcasting was just going to be speaking, but actually there's a lot of writing involved. That's, this is like my main job at Multitude is like this writing stuff. So structuring is one side and the other side is this stuff. Like this is my entire job. It's copywriting. Sorry you got involved in copywriting when you thought it was podcasting. It's also copywriting. Here is all the show level metadata that I'm talking about. So we have the artwork here. You have the show title here. You're going to have the category that Apple podcast sorts for you. Make sure to choose what is true. You don't want to try to like game the system and get into like religion. If you're a sports podcast, like we get, we get the joke, but you really need to sort yourself accordingly. Make sure you have your show author and your website, because like if you're going to create maybe a artist LLC or like your artist name or, or you're creating your artist brand, make sure that all kind of fits together. All of our shows are under multitude and that's, they're all under the multitude brand. And then this is the actual independent podcast website, which make a website.
spend the time and make a website. Squarespace is out there for you. Wix is out there for you. It's so easy to build a website now. You don't need to know HTML. Build a website for your show. You deserve it. And then the show description is really, really important. It is the immediate summary that is going to tell you about the show. Again, people do read these and use them as decisions to listen to podcasts. So uh, make sure it's tight. We're looking for two to three sentences. Two to three sentences. This first one is the first summary. The second sentence is kind of like, what are you going to expect in all of the different types of episodes you're going to get from the show? And then my third sentence, I would say, um, we don't have this here, but I would tell people when the show comes out every other Wednesday, every Friday, the first and the first and 15th of the month. I would say that because people will ask you all the time because they want to be told and don't want to like think about it. Episode titling. Um, this is also really important, like the structure of your podcast. The title should be consistent and for familiar to your listeners. You got to ask these questions, these really nitpicky questions here. Look at these two episodes that I have here for this fake dog podcast I have. This this show, this episode is going to be about what do you do at the dog park? And they have a guest come on about a psychologist i don't know i made up dr jenny myers she's not she's not real but she's like a dog psychologist i guess and she's coming on right these two are are incredibly different but you need to figure out which one you like the most do you like is going to be app or episode uh are you gonna have a colon or a dash here to separate the beginning are you even going to have numbers is you can just totally throw out the numbers are you going to have a title that is um you're going to have a title which is explaining exactly what the episode is about or you want to take it you want to make a joke and you think that the jokes will help bring people in there are pros and cons to all of them are you if you're going to have a guest is going to be with or with the w are you going to include the guests in your episode title i think you should because the reason why you have a guest is to tell people you have the guest, so I would put in the title. Um, you could also have a title structure. It might not work for this dog park. Um, it might not work for this dog podcast that I've made up, but you could call it like um, something that we do for This Is Good For You, which is our kind of like uh, about a show about th uh, activities or subjects that people enjoy that are like special um, – uh, guilty, not gu like erasing the guilty pleasure. That's talking about pleasure and things that make people happy. It's always like blank. The title is this is good, to, good for you. The structure is always blank is good for you. Walking is good for you. Plants are good for you. Um, open communication with your lover is good for you. That's always the title of the, that's always the title of the show. So making this decision is important, writing this all out, seeing what it looks like. This is all important to do to think of ahead of time. Okay, we're talking about episode descriptions here. This is when we get specific. Um, your episode description is where you, you have so many characters in the episode description of every single episode. So use it as an opportunity to get everything out of the way. You can summarize the episode in a way that is searchable and useful. Remember, do talk about it. 10 best Madonna music videos of all times. Don't say, get an intense over boots. That we don't know that this was about Madonna. How would we, we wouldn't, unless it's a Madonna podcast and that is a given, that summary needs is actually very helpful to people. This is also an opportunity for you to include information about the show and link to all of your socials, your websites, and your Patreon. Or you can give credits to everyone. I'm going to give examples of good episode descriptions in a minute. But like, think about, remember that this is a tool for yourself. Like, use it. Don't just uh, take it for granted because you don't want to read it all out. Definitely use this. Here's a good description for, here's a good example. This is another one from Spirits. We have the summary here. And the first paragraph is a summary. The second paragraph is, is links to a recommendation that one of the hosts made. Always link your recommendations so that people find your recommendations actually like that you're you're doing that if you're going to do a recommendation. So we have links here. We have a content warning right below that. That's something that uh, that uh, Spirits does is content warning. And that's a, this is a perfect place to put it. Below that, we have the, the uh, bio of the guest with links. Below that is a uh, are some paragraphs about Spirit of Spirits itself, the thing that is copied on every single episode. You see it has links to their Twitter, their Facebook, Insta, YouTube, Goodreads, Patreon, episode uh, transcripts, and um, just the website in general. And then we have the show description below it. We always put the show description and every single one of our episodes to help with SEO so that if someone is searching for um, mythology podcast or spooky podcast or spirits podcast, it gets sorted into Google more and more. So here's here's an example. I'm just going to leave this up for a few seconds here so that people understand what we I take a lot of pride in that our episode descriptions are very, 
very comprehensive. And look, look at how much we wrote. There's so much. You have so much space in the episode description. No one is going to be mad that you gave them more episodes. They're either not going to read it or read it. Those are the only two choices. No one's going to be mad at you for having a long show description or a uh, long episode description. Um, we're going to switch to the next one. I have another example here. This is for Join the Party, uh, which is our Dungeons & Dragons show. So this would work if you have one that has a cast or a fiction show. So you see that we have a housekeeping section here, some announcements. Um, we have a live for a live show that was coming up. Um, some other things about about uh, merch. Then we have a more in more of a list form, a place for us to find a, for you to find us online. Um, and then we have the cast and the crew below this, and then the about us is the show description. So there are a few different ways. There are some way, different ways to do it. Um, but again, very comprehensive. If someone was like, "Hey, I want to, I want to know where join the party Twitter is." Boom, always there. And if you structure it once, you know, just keep keep copy and pasting. Just all you have to do is copy and paste. Like the the two sections here, the middle one and the one to the right, that is copied and pasted every single time. You're only writing like a little bit here. So it's actually a lot less daunting than you think it might seem. Additional metadata this is a little more finicky, but remember more hosts now support some more things. This is something just to keep in mind. Hopefully the tech of podcasting is going to catch up. But remember, you also have the opportunity to label the type of episode, to label if this is a serial, if someone should start at episode one, or you can kind of pick it up wherever. And then these season episode titles are things that Apple it's kind of Apple and Spotify are pushing. They're like, they're getting there, but we're, we're kind of waiting to see what happens with tech. But remember, lots of metadata. Metadata is everywhere. Wonderful. And finally, we're going to talk about social media here and the directly building your audience. So here's the thing about social media is that you need to remember what social media was originally made for, which was, I am someone who... I am someone that you I that other people want to hear and you can follow me and you're going to follow the content that I'm making. I like the stuff that you're saying. I'm going to follow it. So look at your audience profiles that maybe you want or the type of person that you've uh, the type of person who is going to listen to your show and, and try to figure out where they might hang out. And then if you want to go hang out there as well, you can go hang out there. Um, brainstorm how you're going to contribute to these spaces remember you need to create something on social media for people to actually follow you people aren't just going to follow you when you post about your podcast every two weeks when it comes out you need to contribute something to the uh space that you're going to so remember so social media is for sharing stuff that you and your audience loves lots of retreats lots of quote tweets lots of posting stuff on instagram stories and uh, all that stuff but you're also building a relationship with other peers out there whether it's like other people who are on social media whether it's other podcast twitters uh, other stuff like that you're showing your potential listeners what they can expect maybe if they like you on social media they're also going to like you on the podcast um, this is also what I was talking about, the voice of your show. You can, When you're distilling what is it the show can stand on its own, it's not just uh, the hosts or some one of the hosts speaking through uh, Twitter that says something else. Um, for your platform, just do what you understand. You don't need to use all the other ones. I would say just Twitter and Instagram. That's where podcasters kind of hang out. Um, but if you don't really like one, don't do it. Uh, but claiming your username, on, at least on those, or all the ones that you want, I think is a good idea. If you understand Reddit and TikTok, God bless you. I don't understand it. So that's why we don't have a show, show presence there. And that's okay. How often should I post? I don't want to be prescriptive about this, but it is about quality over quantity. Just one original tweet. Uh, where you say something that's not just a retweet per day is very important. Instagram, maybe one story per day, maybe one post per week. I don't know. Just make sure that you're churning something at least on a regular basis. Um, and make sure to quote tweet or, and, and repost uh, the nice things that people say about your show. That makes pe people know that you're you're out there and you, you hear them. Here's some great examples that we've done. Um, this is where uh, Spirits, the mythology show, um, found a, a, whiz, a witch hut found a tweet that was showing like a witch hut uh shaped like a chicken in a forest and it's like baba yaga the the fictional uh, uh witch mother and then join the party we have a whole thing about how new people to Dungeons and dragons are always the best players and we really love them and we love how they are uh how they do new things so we're always encouraging people to find new players and we're happy that they're that they are new players in dungeons and dragons 
Um, audience growth, uh, remember getting to know your community. Remember to give. You're not just taking content. You're not just trying to build followers so they listen to your podcast. You need to contribute. Don't follow a million accounts. Don't pay for social media ads. It's not worth the money. Don't don't go and sell a bigger podcast replies and be like, hey, if you like this show, you really like my show. People hate that. It's the worst. Don't do that. And it, don't treat each other like competition. It is uh, Time is not a finite resource. People do listen to podcasts while they're doing other things. There's a lot more time for people to listen to podcasts. So other shows are not your competition. And finally, we're just talking about metrics really quickly. I think that this is less important, but um, these are just some things that you guys can, can review uh, about metrics. And don't stress about metrics. Uh, as long as if your show is growing, that is better. And whatever that means to you. Uh, just set goals for yourself, things that you hope uh, for how you grow, whether we're talking about social media or for audiences in general. Uh, and that is my and that is my last slide. I will go back to my first one. I'm going to go all the way there. Pop, 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 pop. Look at Kate Planchette really quickly. Pop, pop, pop. Branding your podcast. Okay, I talked about quite a lot here. I know it is 6.50, so we do have some time for questions. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. I know there's a lot here. Please review this uh, this PowerPoint. And you can go to multitude.productions uh, slash resources. We have a ton of free resources for helping you improve your podcast, whether we're talking about audience creating, whether we're talking about structuring, sound design, editing, uh, getting ads on your show we have tons of free resources that is multitude dot productions slash resources uh, i think that is also a link that's going to be shared out by the building beats folks as well all right questions hit me all right any tips on recording your first podcast episode i'm planning on recording an episode tonight wonderful i would say um treat this like a pilot your first episode is your pilot if you don't like your first episode scrap it do it again that is what I would say. So like stay loose, stick to your structure, but listen to back to it. Get like, do I like it? Do I, what are things I like? What are things I don't like? Show it to other people. And if it's not what you want, there's no reason for you to publish it. Do it again. Treat this like a piloting process. That's what I would say about your first episode. Good luck. Can you explain a little bit what a pilot is for those who may not be familiar with that terminology? I got you. A pilot is basically is something from the TV world where it's like, hey, make a first episode of a show and we'll see if we make the rest of the show. But of course, you're not showing this to TV executives, you're showing this to you. So use this like a piloting process. You're using this. No one needs to see what you're doing from the beginning. You have plenty of time to iterate and to make your show better. So again, treat list like uh, I don't care if it comes out or not. This could be the final product or not. Uh, I'm more than willing to do this again. Um, and it will keep you loose. Oh, the stakes will be a lot less high and uh, you have plenty of time to iterate. Um, I, Eric, I did have a question for you about metadata for yeah. music. I know they tell you to that your metadata needs to be um, embedded into your MP3 that you send out that you post um, on different distribution sites. Is that the same with your podcast and how would you do that if so? Yeah, that is a great question. I'm going to go back to my example really quickly. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah, so uh, when you're posting your podcast, uh, there is a field for your title, and uh, you can put that in. And then there's a whole field of, like, show description, and that's where you put all this stuff. So it's not embedding necessarily. I think with music, I kind of understand what you mean by embedding. But um, the, the process of posting a podcast is kind of arcane because it's based on a old technology called RSS feed, which was built in the early uh, 2000s and hasn't been improved since then. So when you go to your podcast platform for you to do that, there's a whole section for show description. And then just make sure to test it and make sure that your, your links work and that the uh, formatting of your show, the formatting of your show description Sorry, the formatting of your episode description looks the way that you want to. It, for some reason, it looks different on every single one. This is from the, the program Pocket, the app Pocket Casts, and we find that it has the best, um, the best formatting and hold and keeps all of your links and stuff. So make sure it looks like the way that you want it to look like, um, and make sure your links work. Thank you, Eric. Uh, they say, I have been doing a live video podcast type show on Facebook Live, and I want to take things to the next level. What is the best platform to do something similar? Or maybe what is your favorite platform to do something similar? Good question. I guess what, I'm not sure, really sure what you mean by platform. Um, I guess if you're, what I would say, I see what you're doing about making a video podcast. Um, the point of 
audio podcast of podcasts of audio of audio stories like this is that you can edit and that you, it, you can make it seem seamless. So it's like you're editing out your ums, you're rearranging sections, you're kind of cutting entire questions. So if what what you're doing, if I would strongly advise you not to just rip your audio from your video and post that as an MP3 through your and post that as an MP3 on your podcast. That hurts me deeply on a level that you would just rip that and not edit it at all. Like edit it down make it seem seamless if you're making another if you're just doing it to post it in different ways like i guess all power to you but like as a, a professional podcaster edit your audio <laughs> please edit your audio um i think i would also recommend I, this is a really good time to talk about hosting platforms like i was saying uh, to dale the place where you where you upload your podcasts uh, i recommend pretty much anything except for anchor anchor the fact that you can do it for free means you're selling in a different way there have been concerns about uh, what Anchor does with your data. The consolidation of massive media by Spotify under their umbrella makes me queasy. So uh, I would just say maybe to, don't avoid Anchor and the promises that they'll give you about the ads that they'll sell. Anything, just you can pay a little bit of money. We use we use Libsyn. It's pretty straightforward. It does what it does. No one's going to hack my data on Libsyn. So uh, there are some other ones like Buzzsprout in like pod bean uh, i recommend libsyn though it's actually not that expensive it, if you're gonna put the money you're gonna put into is one is art and two your um your hosting platform so if you want or they want to keep the live video aspect do you have any I suggestions on that dog i just learned how to do video because of the pandemic this is a thing i just learned how to do twitch like i play i play video games on twitch i don't know anything else really about that the the um video podcast landscape um no not really my personal opinion i think like youtube would probably be better than uh than facebook live uh because it reaches a bigger audience facebook live you're just going to reach the people you already know for yeah, the most part that's real i also think there's actually if you do it on twitch i really love twitch i think that it's wonderfully gamified and i'm really starting to learn it and then you can export to youtube so you take the vod and you put it out there but again i know so much less about the video space than i do the audio space but that's also why i got into podcasting i didn't want to i only recently decided that it was okay for people to see my face so like i just it's a totally different beast in, in treating it as such um I hope you still got stuff out of what I said, but um, I, it's it's not something I know stuff about. Again, podcasting is about recording something and then editing it down to being a real silver a bullet about what it is. And like, look, I I'm a professional podcast in the medium. Like, I care about the medium, and uh, there it is the pre production, the production, and the post production phases are what's important to podcasting. So edit your podcasts and also mix mix them. There's a there's some we have some stuff about uh, how to mix how to mix and make your podcast sound better. Um, uh, if, if you guys are all starting here, we have like a thirty five dollar uh, podcast starter kit that we have at multitude uh, productions slash uh, resources. If you want to pick that up, and we kind of touch on all elements of podcasting, and that's something that that you're interested in. But we also have a ton of free resources if you don't want to pay. Eric, I had a question. Yeah. Um, what podcasts are you listening to these days? Oh, good question. I um, well, first I want to recommend all. I want to recommend all of my podcasts. Um, I, seriously, I, I I spend a lot of time on joining the party. If any of you like Dungeons and Dragons or like fictional worlds and and oral storytelling, I love that stuff. Let me check my podcast player. I have it. I actually have it right here. Um, I really love all fantasy everything. That's my one of my, my one of my favorite shows. It's a fantasy draft podcast. You know, you really need to be a type of person to like really not edit much and just kind of riff. And like there are these are run by comedians, but there is a structure, the fantasy draft format, you know, where you go around and you draft anything from a certain topic. I really love that. Um, I love Flash Forward, which is by Rose Eveleth, which is kind of like a uh, it's a science and like futurology show. It, it answers one specific place. Like, what if our future looked like this? I love Flash Forward. Um let me think. Oh, Exolore is one of our multitude shows, and I love it a lot. Um, Dr. Moya McTeer, she just got her uh, PhD recently, uh, talks about the the uh, science behind the world building in fiction. 
and it's kind of like a really interesting conflagration and combination of world building fiction and science and she is she's she's a scientist and mythologist and like folklorist she is absolutely incredible so uh exolore and um yeah i would recommend those are the three that i would recommend all fantasy everything flash forward and exolore as well as join the party cool. i will put that in the chat right now all fantasy everything flash forward exolore join yeah, there's also a thing I really um, representing for people, independent artists, um, you know, Spotify and the people and the people underneath. Listen, I love The Ringer. I love the I love a lot of those shows. But, you know, sometimes there's something about being able to recommend independent artists to other people is something that I care about uh, quite a lot. So those are some good ones. All Fantasy Everything is on HeadGum. Uh, Flash Forward is independent. And X. Oh, no. Exolore. Exolore and Join the Party are part of. All of this information was amazing. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, yeah, please, everyone, get those free resources at multitude.productions. If you want to find me on Twitter, I'm on Twitter at L underscore Silvero, E-L underscore S-A-L-V-E-R-O. Just put that in the chat, um, where I talk about podcasts all the time. And I, I am so happy for all of you on your podcast journey. I'm so happy that uh, Building Beats and the uh, mayor's office are, are repping this. This is really good. Podcasting is real. It's a real medium, and it's very difficult. And I'm glad that all of you are coming out here to uh, to grow and to learn. It's it's awesome. Well, thank you for being here with us, Eric. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Um, that's it for us. You can visit our website and get the full rundown on the future workshops uh, but yeah go to buildingbeats.org and you'll see everything that has come to pass and everything will, that will come in the future <laughs> so thanks for coming guys thank you thank you eric thank you again thank you dale thank you sarah absolutely bye everyone bye everyone have a good have day a good... thank you so much for doing this dale thank you for your help marcus thank you for your help um and i'll see you guys on the internet yeah